بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم جاي هولي هولي باكي علي ديا دا نام مصلي تي جاي هولي هولي باكي علي ديا دا نام مصلي تي جاي هولي هولي باكي علي ديا دا نام مصلي تي جاي ہماری انجمن کے قبلہ علیہ مام مولانا سید ابرار حسین نقوی صاحب کہ وہ ممبر فروز ہوں اور اپنے مخصوص انداز میں آج کی اس مجلس عزا کے حوالے سے اپنا نظرانہ یقیدت پیش کریں بدل دار صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم نعرہِ تکبیر نعرہِ رسالت نعرہِ رسالت نعرہِ حیدری نعرہِ حیدری حسینیت حسینیت یزیدیت یزیدیت نعرہِ to attend the majlis of Amir al-Mu'maneen Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salatu wassalam because the love for Ali is a special gift from Allah azwajal and not every single person has this gift either this gift has been given to you by Allah Azza wa Jal 
or you are amongst those people that do not have the ma'rafat, the understanding of who Ali ibn Abi Talib is. We see that in the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the uncle of the Prophet ibn Abbas was sitting in the house of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and the Holy Prophet is sitting in front of him. And we see that Ibn Abbas is talking to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And all of a sudden, Amir al muminin Imam al muttaqin Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salatu wa salam enters the room. As soon as Ali enters, the Holy Prophet begins to smile and he becomes happy so much that the features of the blessed face of Rasulullah change. Ibn Abbas looks at the Prophet and says, Ya Rasulullah, what is the reason? Why that all of a sudden Ali has entered the room? You have like become a different person. You have become happy. You are smiling. And we can see that your happiness cannot be contained. What is the reason why you have become happy? Ibn Abbas when asked this to Rasulullah, Rasulullah begins to smile and he says, Oh my uncle, don't you understand and don't you remember the love of Ali ibn Abi Talib is not something that I have ordered, but the love of Ali ibn Abi Talib is a command directly from Allah. Wow. Yeah, I mean the love for Ali ibn Abi Talib, the mabaddat for Ali ibn Abi Talib that we have, it is a direct command from Allah. Allah has ordered us to love Amin al muminin And those people that still doubt, I was reading a hadith today, and the hadith is from the second Khalifa of the majority of the Muslims. Umar ibn Khattab is the narrator of this hadith. And he says that, Wallah, he says this by saying a oath, Wallah, I have heard from Rasulullah. Who is saying this? The second Khalifa of the Muslims. He says that I have heard from Rasulullah that if on one side all of the seven heavens are put together and the Iman of Ali ibn Abi Talib is put on one side O oh, Muslimin, believe me that the Iman of Ali ibn Abi Talib will be heavier than the seven heavens put together. People doubt the Iman of the father of Amir al muminin People still do not understand what is the lineage of this blessed family. Don't the Muslims remember that Amir al muminin said, that I belong to that family, that no person in my family has bowed down to idols. It is only the family of Ali that from the dawn of time up to when Rasulullah told the people and started the message of Islam by saying La ilaha illallah it is Amir al muminin that continued this mission of Tawheed the Holy Prophet we see that as long as he was in Mecca he only preached La ilaha illallah 
And it is when he understood that now all the people have understood what is the true meaning of La ilaha illallah. It is then Allah ordered his prophet now tell them Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa And when everyone understood what is the meaning of Rasulullah it is then Allah ordered his prophet O Muhammad give them this message I will protect you. Yani when the Holy Prophet said La ilaha illallah, Allah did not say, Oh Muhammad, I will protect you. Because that was the most difficult time. Because all the people of Mecca, they were idol worshippers. They had more than 7,000, 70,000, 80,000 gods. And all of a sudden a person stands and he says that there is no God but Allah. That was the most difficult time. But Allah did not say, Oh Muhammad, I will help you, I will protect you. When the Holy Prophet said, Muhammad Rasulullah, Allah did not say, Oh Muhammad, I will help you, I will protect you. But why is it when the time of the Vilayat of Ali ibn Abi Talib came, Allah said, Oh Muhammad, complete this. Because if you do not complete this, then you have done nothing. Reminding the people that La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah, if you want to understand what is the essence of Islam, then you need to understand what is the Bilawiyat of Ali ibn Abi Talib. is when the Prophet said, O oh people, I do not speak without the command of Allah Azzawajal. My tongue, my lips do not move without the command of Allah. It is Allah who said, O oh Muhammad, now tell these people, Man kuntu mawla fahada aliyun mawla. It is an honor for us. As I have said, it is an honor for us, why? Because we are amongst the believers of Ali ibn Abi Talib. We see that these ayam people are preparing for Eid. As soon as the 20th of Ramadan passes, we see that throughout the world, the Muslims, they start preparing for Eid. But it is the Mu'maneen that in these last 10 days of Ramadan, we know that it is the Ashra of Nijat. But we know that you cannot get Nijat without Muhammad and Ali Muhammad. Because the Holy Prophet said, Inna al Hussein misba'ul Guidance, divine guidance is through Hussein. Nijat is through Hussein. Nijat is through Ali ibn Abi Talib. Nijat is through Ali Muhammad. Yani those people in these last 10 days of Ramadan, they are hoping to achieve Nijat. Then they need to come to the door of Ahlul Bayt. They need to understand who Ali Muhammad are. If Ali on the 19th of Ramadan was struck by the sword, it was because he preached all his life, La ilaha illallah. He brought people towards Allah as And it is because of this hatred that people went against Ali Muhammad. We, when we attend Majalis, and as I said yesterday, we need to come with the need that we want to learn something from Amir al -Mum. We want to learn something from the life of Imam al mutaqi Amir al muminin Ali ibn Abi Talib al salatu wasalam kum Allah Together can we have another loud salat? We all in this blessed month want to attain the pleasure of Allah. 
Yani whatever we do, especially in this month of Ramadan, we always do it with the niyat of qurbatan in Allah. Yani we want to get close to Allah. We want Allah Azzawajal to forgive us. We want Allah's pleasure. Because our life has no meaning until we please Allah Azzawajal. Amir al Mu'maneen Ali ibn Abi Talib al Salam says three things enable a servant of Allah to attain the pleasure of Allah. Yani, if you want to make Allah happy, what are those three things? Yani, this is the lesson that I want the youth and the youngsters to learn from this majlis today. The first thing. Amir al-Mu'maneen says that persistence in seeking forgiveness from Allah Azzawajal pleases Allah Azzawajal. Yani some people think that only if I commit a sin, I will ask Allah for forgiveness. How is it that you are certain that when you woke up this morning until you entered this majlis, Yani our Iman is that where the Majlis of Hussein, where the Majlis of Ali ibn Abi Talib wasalam, where the Majlis of Ahlul Bayt are taking place, a person can only gain reward. So until you walk through the door of where this Majlis is taking place, how many of you can put their hands on their heart and guarantee that since this morning I have not committed one single sin? I cannot say that. Because the thing is that sometimes when we are sitting alone, how many times the shaitan attacks us? How many times all of a sudden? You know, Sharia is so tight when it comes to the month of Ramadan that if a person in the state of fasting, makes the attention that he is going to break his fast and he wants to commit a guna whether he does not go ahead with breaking his fast because he has already made the intention Ulama says that until he does not again make the attention of continuing his fast his fast breaks in this blessed month of Ramadan, even if you attribute a hadith, a saying to the Holy Prophet or Aima or Allah Azwajal, and you know it is not true, then your fast is broken. This is a month of speaking the truth. Amir al Mu'maneen says that you can only attain the pleasure of Allah. If a person constantly, persistently asks Allah for forgiveness, can he get into the habit of saying Astaghfirullah? Can he continually, when you are always saying Astaghfirullah, 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 back of your mind, you are constantly thinking about Allah. And when you are thinking about Allah, it will help you from saving yourself from sin. The second thing is to be good-mannered, well-mannered towards people. You need to gain the pleasure of Allah, to have good akhlaq. Yani even if someone is bad to you. The hadith that we covered yesterday, Amir al muminin says that a sign of my Shia is that my Shia loves the other person who has my love. Yani a Shia will love a Shia more. Or Amir al muminin says that how do you love him? You will love him the way you want to be loved. Shabbat. Yani if I walk into a room and I expect people to stand up for me, then when someone else walks in, I should, the least thing that I can do, that I should stand up for him as well. This is what Islam teaches us. This is the blessed month of Ramadan. My children, my youth, learn something. Islam does not mean that you 
be good yourself and when it comes to someone else you be bad to them yani if you want for iftari if every day you want for example shall i say milkshake and when you are doing the iftari for someone else you say no today we will only have water why are they not allowed to have milkshake no amir al mu'minin says Bismillah. If they are diabetic, then obviously you should not give them. But Islam says, even if they are diabetic, the least thing you can do is offer them it, whether they take it or not. Islam says, what you want for yourself, have the niyyah that you will give that to others as well. The third and final thing is frequently a person gives charity. Yani in this blessed month, everything that you do, it is multiplied by 70, mashaAllah. It is multiplied by 70. You give one pound, you get the ajal and sawab of 70 pounds. What a deal is that? One pound, you get 70 pounds in return. You do the iftari of one person, you get the sawab of 70 people. You read one rakat in this month of Ramadan, you get the sawab of 70 rakats. Why isn't it that we move away from prayer? This month we should be praying. It is in this blessed month that our Mawla, our Master, Amir al Mu'mani, was killed in the state of Namaz. Amir al muminin loved the namaz so much that Amir al muminin would pray that Allah, when my final time comes, make sure that it is in the state of namaz. Look, Allah granted Amir al muminins dua and when the final time of Amir al muminin came, when he was struck in the head by the sword, he was in the state of namaz. He had finished his first rakat, he was in sajda, and the tyrant struck the head of Amir al Mu'mineen. Jibreel announced, Qad qutla al Amir al Mu'mineen. The believers, oh believers, your Mawla has been struck. Mu'mineen al these days, these majalis that have been organized, especially the people that are sponsoring these majalis, may Allah Azawajal give the sawab of this majalis to the marhumeen and bless them in whatever they do because the zikr of Ali ibn Abi Talib gives you barakat when the final time of Amir al muminin was close. Uh, in a few days, we, uh, Iqis Ramzan, the 21st of Ramadan, will arrive. Uh, and what happened when the head of Amir al muminin was struck? Uh, Imam Hassan came. What did our Mawla say? Our Mawla said, Oh Hassan, first leave the namaz and then look after me. Hassan finished the namaz. Just try to think for a second. Your father is struck by a sword. His head is open. He is bleeding and he asks you to read namaz. How do you think Hassan completed the namaz? Alas, the namaz had finished. The companions carried Amir al muminin and they were taking Amir al muminin to his house. When they were a few steps away, Amir al muminin Muminin began to cry. He said, Oh my companions, I am pleased with you. But oh my companions, I request you that you leave me here. The companion said, Oh Mola, why is it that at this last time you want us to leave you? And he Ibn Abi Talib begins to cry and he said, Oh my companions, I do not want you to hear the cry of my daughter Zainab and Kalsum. I ask Ya Mawla, today you are in a kufa and you cannot take that your companions listen to the crying of Zainab and Kalsum. Oh Mawla, a day will come when Zainab
I will enter Kuba. The people of Kuba will say, throw stones, this is the daughter of Ali ibn Abi Talib. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajaun.